Well, the Chandrayaan-3 mission has propelled India to the elite space club. But what's next for Chandrayaan-3? Joining us to better understand this, we have with us at the moment Dr. Venkateshwara Sharma, former Deputy Director, ISRO. In a short while from now, we will be joined by Ratan Srivastav, author and independent consultant on aerospace. Dr. Sharma, like I asked Pallav sir this morning, did you get any sleep this night, last night or was the excitement over the top? I think we have lost the sleep for several days. We have forgotten sleeping. Most also of the maybe... time, either we are in, either we are in control room or we are uh, at a place where we are guiding the team for uh, the success. Since July 14th, and uh, maybe a few days before July 14th, is the preparation of launch. We have been literally, literally on our toes. Of course, this is nothing new for uh, ISRO or new for me. We are used to working like this. Every launch. Every satellite, every rocket is equally important, equally, uh, you know, uh, you know, demanding. And we are used to working this. And this is our culture. And uh, we have continued our culture for Chandrayaan 3 mission also. And it's proven successful so far. It may be half a century since the last Apollo mission. But landing on the moon remains a huge technical feat. There's no disputing that. And that India chose one of the moon's poles as its destination a tougher prospect than landing near the equator makes the success that much sweeter don't you agree of course yes uh, as we have been talking on this uh, subject for last nearly maybe two days on uh, various media it is one of the very important decisions that uh, isro took for landing on the south pole and the reasons are obvious first is that we are the first to go it is also that, that both scientifically as well as uh, from the humanitarian consideration, it is, it is good to land, uh, land at uh, the South Pole because uh, we have been looking at uh, the possibilities of uh, the water, possibilities of helium, possibility of having some good minerals and chemicals which are useful for uh, establishing a colony. Finally, uh, everyone is interested in what I can do there in, Chandra, you know, in uh, Chandrayaan or uh, in the moon. Can I have a colony? If I want to have a colony, what all I need, what all uh, information I need, and moreover, uh, whatever uh, you know assumptions I have made or whatever data I have got through various orbiters of uh, you know India and other countries, how close they are with respect to the actual ones is what is being looked into, and uh, the studies are going on extremely well, as has been announced by ISRO. Uh, rover has rolled down yesterday around 1:30, 2 o'clock. And it is uh, uh, moving around the moon. It, it's doing extremely well. And it, uh, it also has uh, two payloads on it for analysis of uh, the moon. And also, Lander has got uh, the three payloads. The Ramba, the Chase, and the Ilsa, they are also uh, calibrated to start uh, you know, experimentation. And very soon, we will have the experimental results. And of course, the photos and uh, the videos from the uh, you know, uh, Vikram as well as Pragya, they are available and may be made available to the public for you for very shortly. Well, Ratan Srivastav also joins us on the broadcast this morning. Mr. Srivastav, India has some measure of technological superiority now compared to most other spacefaring countries. It's quite clear. But this landing also boosts the prestige of ISRO just less than a week after a Russian probe crashed into the moon's surface. Uh, I agree with you and uh, thank you, Dr. Sharma, to bring us a perspective of what ISRO has been doing and what the rover and the lander are carrying on the, uh, carrying on the systems to do the experiments that they're supposed to be doing. Uh, it, is a, it is definitely a huge achievement for ISRO and for India because we have done this on a very frugal budget. Uh, we have done it at a shoestring budget which probably never anybody can imagine to do it. And that is possibly because of the fantastic engineering and the systems and the processes that ISRO has put in place. For example, when they give the boost uh, to the to the uh, spacecraft uh, for the next orbit, when to give the boost, how to give the boost, how much to give, so that decides that decides the kind of fuel that we'll carry. And it is also a huge success because this is a totally made in India spacecraft. Uh, every component that has gone into this spacecraft has been made in India. Having said that. Uh, you know, uh, the Indian engineering, the Indian vendors and the Indian design stands to be the best in the world today. As, uh, as uh, we can see that we have been the first country to land on the south pole of the moon. 
and uh, what better can we have than to see that the rover has just rolled out a few minutes back about half an hour back the rover has rolled out after the dust has settled and it will start its journey and start carrying the experiments that it is designed to carry and as uh, shiramaji just said probably you know uh, it will lead to more results that we can analyze and possibly at the end of the day what is the objective being a part of the artemis uh, accord uh, we can share this knowledge with other countries and colonize the moon maybe at some point of time but that is much later right now right. what are the minerals available what is the thermal temperature of the moon what are the kind of uh, uh, rare earth that we can get out of it that is that is what we are trying to do at this point of time of course apart from the fact to understand the extent of water that is available we know water is available right. what is the extent of water available it's fantastic engineering sticking to a shoestring budget but dr Absolutely. sharma the mission will be the first to physically chemically and thermally characterize the soil and air near the moon's south pole on the location if you can tell our viewers about why the data from chandrayaan 3 is so crucial Uh, well, uh, if you see, uh, there have not been physical experiments carried out on this, uh, you know, South Pole. And there have not been uh, exploration carried out in this South Pole. And uh, the three pillars, uh, which I just want to make a mention again, the really, really very important pillars. One is the Ramba LP. It's called uh, to measure the near surface plasma ions and the electron density and its uh, and its changes with time. So very important experiment which. Um, you know, which, are, which is going to be carried out by Lander and Chandra's surface thermophysical experiment. How does the te temperature change over a period of time and with the, with the sunrise and with the sunset in the moon, how does the temperature affect the various parameters and the materials which are available on the moon? And the instrument for lunar seismic activity, very, very important to study the seismic activity. Because you know that you know earthquakes are there, and similarly there are moonquakes. And how is this, uh, you know, uh, affecting the moon? And what is that we can study out of this seismic, uh, uh, seismic instrument? Is what is being looked at. In addition to that, there are other two payloads on the rover. One is the APXX, the alpha particle X-ray spectrometer. Studying X-ray is extremely important from both from the human landing point of view as well as from material and uh, you know, other uh, scientific experimental point of view. Even if you see many of the science experiments which are carried out, even in Earth, there are you know, uh, X-ray spectrometry and things like that. Okay, And uh, laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. Another very important uh, you know, uh, payload, which is for elemental composition analysis, whether magnesium is there, whether aluminum is there, whether silicon is there, or whether uh, you know, potassium is there. This analysis is also important. Not only from the point of view that the such type of material is available, but it also leads to know whether there was life existing earlier or whether life is possible in the future. So this is where we are going to, you know, have a, a definitive advantage for whatever experiments have been carried out, whatever uh, analysis has been carried out, whatever the information which is available with the various, uh, you know, orbiters. This is the advantage we are going to have it, uh, you know. In terms of right. uh, additional information and the you know the confirmation of whatever we have studied. Right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for making time for us this morning and joining us on the broadcast. It's clear that the rocks and soil in Moon South Pole could provide clues to the early solar system as well. The polar regions of the Moon have remained unexplored, as we know, and it is yet to be proven that the water ice is accessible or mineable. In other words, are there reserves of water that can be extracted economically?